Hey, how's it going? And today I'm doing a video on neon lights. This video is going to be a little bit different from the videos that I normally do because instead of walking you through every step, I think it would take too long. So I'm just going to kind of go over some of the little gotchas and things that may arise when you're doing this. I was inspired to do this from the uh, Lightwave content folder. If you have that content folder, if you go into primitive lights, there's this primitive neon sign. This Luis Lopez, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. This guy is uh, very talented to do this neon sign, the light wave neon sign. If you look at it, you know, you might look at it for about 10 seconds and go, hey, that's a cool sign. But if you do a deep dive into it, there's a lot. It's, a, it's basically a master class of information about light wave. And if you can master this sign, you've got some serious light wave skills because it really draws upon almost every Thing you need to know about light wave in order to do it so that's why as i was trying to do a tutorial about this it ended up being too much like it was just too much because it was going to be about modeling and lighting and everything else and it was, it was going to be like three days long so i just decided to do all the steps already and then just kind of walk you through some of the things that you if you're going to try to recreate it or create something similar to it you'll see and kind of what i ended up is a rough approximation of what he did but not even close i would be curious to know how long it took him to design it it, to be honest with you because it, that's a lot of work and I learned a lot of things in trying to reconstruct the scene the first the neon tube thing because if we look at that let me jump over here into my neon tube thing okay so this is what I ended up with it turned out okay I ended up doing this one yeah this one I re-rendered and adjusted some settings and a couple things I noticed is he puts these poles things one of the reasons why I realized he did that is it gives you depth and without those those posts on the thing you can't really see the the depth of the field so without those holders you can't really see the the depth and then he added a gradient so I didn't do everything that he did but you know he's got these wires and he's got this neon tubing and then he's got a gradient to make it go from blue to a different color and he put a weight map on this <laughs> so this is really a more honed down version of what I, what I did but um so this backdrop let's just start with this in this scene if I go into the uh, scene editor I don't have the scene editor on here do I if I go into the layers panel and I press f7 what we've got here is on one layer I've got the tube outer tubing and then on the next layer I've got the inner tubing and then on one layer I've got the roof and then on another layer I've got the wall this texture if you want this texture the the image for this texture it's in that folder it's in the image folders in the downloaded content and basically what he does is he just does a, a uv map it has no depth it's just on the the x and the y here and then you run it on the z when you make your uv map so you just uv map it to a flat uh, surface and then you're good to go there so you create a uv map so this wall the image is uv map two-dimensional polygon the complicated most complicated part is putting the tubes inside of the tubes and the way that you would do that is let me just if i come over here into another layer and this is what I really struggled with the most and this is where I think a lot of the skill comes from but if you go to create and you come in here to spline draw you would just go in the back view you just do something like here and try to make these angles wide as possible what you do is then if you leave this in the the background layer what you do is you'll go into another layer and then you'll if you press shift and have the spline in the background then you just draw a disc like you can draw it here in the right view like that and then you come down here to numeric and then you just make sure the y and the z are the same so it's a perfect circle and then just using if i hit base bar to drop the tool and t you can use all these views to kind of line this up here like this I'm just showing you kind of quick and dirty how you can do this. So let's see here. And you press A to fill the screen. And if I turn it, you want the, the normal side facing outward. So if I turn it here, you'll see that yeah, it's empty that way. So you want to be able to see the normal here. And then you just line this up. So if I hit Y, I can kind of rotate this and then hit T and I can line it up a little bit better, like something like that. And once you got it like that, now on the on the way I did it, I actually bent these back. And so you, I'm just showing you real fast how you do this. So now all you gotta do then is just go to multiply and go to rail extrude. And you just go, okay. And then what you do is 
you do that one more time on a different layer. So you click on a new layer and you keep the spline in the back layer and then you do it again with a little bit smaller disc. And then it'll do a spline and then you'll have basically like this. You'll have one spline that's bigger than the other. Like that's the big one and this is the smaller one. So we got two splines. Those are, and so you have an inner one and an outer one. But you use a spline and that's how you create your two tubes. And then what you gotta do, if you have too much of a bend here, I just subdivided it more to give it a little more. I should have fixed that one a little bit better. And then what you do also is, you've got these in the back, you can bevel those out if you want. And so it's just, like I said, it's an exercise in modeling really to get this. And it's just a tube within a tube using the spline. And then do one big, one small, and then you can, if you go to the queue, like you can set your surfaces and all that. So you want to name the surfaces and all that. And then you just send everything to, and then the other thing is to UV map this wall. So let's just uh, jump in over to, now this is kind of where I'm at with everything. And I'll just walk you through some of these settings. What did I do? I must have accidentally sent something over here. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I probably got too much of everything now. There we go. And so this is kind of what I, I ended up with. Now, one of the cool things about this, it's basically just a, an experimentation in lighting. So there's, in this scene, if we go here to the scene editor, we've got, we'll have a glass tube, the outer tube, the light source is the inner tube, and then these layers are the roof and the wall, and then we have a side light and a mesh light. And basically that's it. What we can do is I can kind of just walk you through all the different settings on here of um, how we do it. So. On here we have, if we look at the, if we go into, let's go into perspective view here for a second. So what we got is if we go into lights, we've got two lights. Let me actually get out of VPR for a second. We've got a, a side light here and it, it's an area light. And then, you know, you can give it really this kind of orange here. And you can play with, around with the intensity and you leave on effect diffuse and open GL and effect specular and effect volumetrics in 200% and for 512 and normalize. And that's the settings and all these settings are in the scene file if you if you want to know and then i did just some of them and then this scene file is really about this mesh light which is the primitive light you come down here and you set the primitive to the light source object and then that gives you the nice that nice kind of spill onto the background uh, from this light and the only thing you have on here is effect diffuse and all these other settings are off and you do increase the samples to 16 and you do sample the surface and you turn normalize off so that's basically your two lights, a side light and this mesh light, which is a, we call it a mesh light, but it's a primitive light. And then if we go into the surface editor, then we've got, so this black is on the back side of the tubes where I highlighted those polygons in Modeler and just surface gave them a black. And then there's a glass tube. Now what I did do different on the glass tube is on the, uh, in the scene file uh, from the LightWave content on the scene file, what you'll see is you've got, he has turbulence on here, but I didn't like the way that that looked. So what I did is I just went to the preset here. Uh, if I went to the open preset and go to the open and I just gave it simple glass and put that on there. So the, I just made the out outer tube simple glass instead of adding turbulence. So if you go into the original scene file from Lightwave, it, he just has default turbulence put on the outer tube, but I actually just put simple glass on as the pre-built. On the light source, and this is really the kind of the main thing, is he has a gradient here, but that's because he's he's using a gradient to change the color from across the neon sign. I didn't do that since this is just a single letter. And so what he does just to create for the inner light source is you have a scalar and then you have the incidence and that's at 90. So you've got a gradient here and there's just two keyframes here. There's one set here at zero alpha and it's on black. And then you have another keyframe down here on the bottom and it's at white and it's at hundred percent. So the first keyframe is black at zero and the last keyframe is white at hundred percent. And then you click here to show inputs, show key inputs. And then you put the scalar, which is at two into the key to alpha. And then the incidence, which is at 90 into the input. And then that just plugs into luminance. And then here you can just play around with the colors. One trick I can share with you is that if you want to copy a color from here to here, what you do is you press control right button. So I press control and right button and I come down here 
and I press Alt and right button and it copies the colors. So that's a, so control right button to copy and Alt right button to paste. So control right button, copy, Alt right button, paste. And then you can just play around. So these are set at 100% specular, clear coats 100, clear coat gloss is 100. And again, all these settings are in the scene file so you can play around with them but other than that it's all pretty straightforward after that you just plug everything in and it's really worth playing around with the one thing that i thought was, that was really creative that he did is that he made he the side light is a complementary color to the kind of the teal of the light so let me go into vpr here you might have to bump this light up here to get a little bit more orange or on the the backdrop i don't know it's just kind of fun to play with and so this neon is, I think I've seen a lot of neon tutorials on uh, YouTube, but I think this way of doing it where you put the a tube within a tube is really the most realistic way to go. And I think that really adds a realism. And of course, you know, you've got to spell out a whole word and you've got to put those um, holders here and those posts along the way to add some depth because without those, you don't really see the depth of this. So I understood once I did this without those posts, why that was important. There's a technique he uses for doing that. And I kind of did break that down and I'll do that in a separate video of how he instanced those posts, which was really creative and would save a lot of time because he uses polygons he positions everything with polygons and then when he does the he lines it to edge so then when he instances it all the posts slip right into place and it's it's perfect and i think he has 46 of them so it would be a lot of work to do that individually so it's really really creative what he's done with this the complementary lighting and, and the modeling and then the wires and that in itself of just what he did with the wires could be its own tutorial so how he did the instancing could be its own tutorial <laughs> how he's done the, the wiring could be its own tutorial and like i said if you combine it all into one it's really like a master class of information in there so so take a look at that scene file and see what you can come up with I, I would really be curious to see what other people can do but it's possible to create some really nice neon lighting effects if you work at it it really is a way to fine-tune your modeling skills too because there's quite a bit of modeling involved with getting it just right I hope you found this helpful this was a little bit different from what I normally do but I just wanted to kind of break this down a little bit more simply to get people started I know I spent a lot of time deconstructing that scene file anyway take care and and have a great day.